have some upper body and lower bodies today. We're gonna to do a little bit of both for our mobility. So you guys have a band? All right, guys, halos. Pull down on one side, pull the other side around. Make big, giant circles with those shoulders. That's what they're supposed to do. So, mm, come up all the way around. And then let's go the other side. Really take your time with it. Try to get that whole circle at 180 degrees with that hand uh, shoulder. Try to pull that band apart. Take your time with it. Grind through. Do 10 each side. Once you get 10, pull that band apart and go both hands. Up and around. Trying to keep your glutes engaged, keep your core nice and tight. Just try to let, try to let all the action happen in your shoulder joint. Ten pass throughs. All right, your second half mobility. This is exact trainer terms. Run, stop, slow, reverse. So depending on how much space you have in your house or your room, we're looking to just do a little sprint, even if it's just a few steps, and then slowly back pedal. And once you get to the back, just working on that explosiveness on the liftoff. Really simple. You don't have to go super fast. You know the deal this week. Just to get the blood flowing, just to get our muscles activated. Focus, man. Focus! Here we go. Five, four, three. Go to work. You guys know the deal by now, right? Round one, two, four, six. Minute rest. Round two, three, six, nine. Minute rest. Round three, five, 10, 15, right? That's pretty easy. Two exercises today. One, hand release push up. Okay, hand, not only do your hands come up, but you wanna think about pulling those shoulder blades back. Retraction. Retract those shoulder blades and then come up into a full push up. Okay, now squeeze your glutes, keep that core nice and tight. You should be parallel to the floor the whole time. I get it. If you don't have the upper body strength or the core strength, your hips are gonna sag a little bit. And you're gonna end up looking like this, peeling up. You're still working, but let's work foundationally. So keep that core nice and tight. If you have to squeeze your glutes, drop down to your knees. Here, you can still keep that flat back. Draw that navel in. Yes, I'm over talking a push up because I want you to do it correct. That's your first exercise. Next exercise one arm deadlift. Not one leg, one arm. So you're here, keeping a neutral stance. Hips are shoulder, feet under your shoulders. Deadlift here. Switch sides. And then bring that weight to the other side. Why, coach? because your other side is going to have to work a little bit harder to maintain core stability. This weight, especially if it's heavy enough, is going to want to pull me to the side. And you don't want to do that as far as keeping your hips stable. You want to be here. So this side's having to work and contract. Make sense? One arm deadlift. So that would be five, five each side. Make sense? It's going to be a lot more work and your warm is going to take you a lot longer. But, it's okay, who cares? All right, are we ready to go? Five, four, three, two, and go to work. All right, your buy-in for your work period is gonna be an L-sit. If you have dumbbells that are big enough, couple different ways you can use them. You can grab the actual handles and press in. Get it? See the L there? 
this way or hands on the outside of the, of the uh, knuckle of the dumbbell. And you're pressing into the floor, activating your lats, activating your upper shoulders, your core, everything. And as you're pressing in, think about drawing that belly button in. You ever seen a gymnast, how they can go from this and then they like pull their legs up through them and they do like some crazy shit. Core strength, right? And obviously mobility, but I don't expect you to do that today. Maybe tomorrow. Um, but think about keeping your hands under your shoulders and think about not doing what I'm doing right now. See how I'm rolling forward? You want to be activating those upper back muscles, those lower back muscles, everything in between. Nice tall long neck and you're just keeping those hips under your shoulders, right? If you're here doing it, it's going to be a little bit more stress for your shoulder and not as much core work. If you're too far forward, it's too much shoulder work. So keep your hips directly underneath. You can keep checking down, making sure those hips stay underneath the shoulders, and you're here, okay? Doing that only for a minute today. I know all week, actually, can you guys even see what I just did? Sorry, did you see that or no? Talk so much, you guys are checked out. You're not even paying attention. All right, real quick. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing I just did, but shoulders under your hips. Hips under your shoulders. Okay, and you're here. Only for a minute. Next up on your list, everybody besides Kevin is doing a narrow squat. Front squat, but your hands are here. Okay, in front, feet are closer together. It's going to be a less range of motion, but you're doing front squats, basically. Narrow stance. So your stance is going to be closer than it would normally be. So here. Okay, still keeping that upright position. More quad dominant. Kettlebell, seriously. I'd like to see you do kettlebell swings instead. Okay, whether you use dumbbells or kettlebells, your call. Anybody else who would like to do kettlebell swings instead? We have been doing a lot of squats, but if your knees are hurting, don't even bother doing them. You have a marathon to do, and we gotta keep you strong for that. Reps are gonna be 12 reps. Next up, it's one of my favorites. Dumbbells on the crease of your hip. Floor press. But I want you to keep your legs up in that L position or right angle. Okay, so you do your floor press and then you're gonna do a leg lift. Floor press, leg lift. Okay, if you wanna advance that, hold the hollow rock position and then do your floor press and then do your leg lift. Okay, two variations, both getting the job done, depending on what fitness level you're at or what you want to do. It's going to be 12 with that. And then your last one's a Roman sit-up. Still using that, you can use one dumbbell or two, keeping that directly above your head, big exhale on the way up, come back to that L sit, or that, that L position, and then look up one vertebrae at a time on the way back down. We're going to be doing 10 of those. Okay, so it's 12, 12, 10 for your work. One minute of L sits. Five, four, three, two, and go to work. Good, good, good. Pull that belly button in. Nice, tall, long neck. All right, here we go. Ironically, is Becky still in the room or she leave? Ironically, we did this last night with yoga, Kev. Um, she left, but it's obviously part of our animal flow process that we're learning. This one is, called, we're going to call it a lateral side kick. Um, it's almost like the, the transverse bridge we were doing earlier in the week. We're going to start in a bear crawl position or a tabletop position. Check in, hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips. 
Okay, from here, you're just gonna rise up an inch above the ground. That's all you're gonna do, right? Pressing into the floor, keeping that position. And then you're gonna pull that left leg through and kick it out to the side. Try not to let your butt touch. That's the goal. Okay, yesterday, Becky was really awesome. She broke it down. But, and we didn't, our first time we did it, we sat down. But you guys are warmed up, you're gonna rock right into it. So you're pressing into that hand again. That's that L sit we just did. Pulling that leg through, back around, reset, other side. Back around, other side. Okay? So the flow is gonna happen with your transitioning. 30 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest. Make sure you're pressing into that hand. I can't stress it enough. All right, let's rock and roll. Five rounds, here we go. Third beat, we go to work. 